Christopher Blaine, Research Associate at African Alliance Securities, is standing by to run us through uh, some of the uh, data that uh, firstly comes through from Namibia. Yesterday we had inflation figures coming through. 5.6% year-on-year growth is the inflation figure that we saw for the month of June. And that, Christopher, is uh, dipping below that 6% uh, level. What does this mean for monetary policy? Um, hi, Samantha. Um, yes, the inflation came down to 5.6% uh, late last, last uh, or late yesterday. Um, there was quite, it was quite a big jump. We expected it to come down, but um, probably not as much as, as it did. Uh, the big culprits were food inflation coming down 0.6% month on month, and then also uh, transport inflation coming down 0.2% month on month where we had the um, petrol price decrease last month contributing to that. Um, in terms of what it means for monetary policy, um, I think this just increases our um, or the probability that the rates will stay at these levels for um, quite, a, quite some time going forward. Um, it obviously increases the chance for a cut, but at this point, our base case scenario is that the rates will remain at these levels for, for much longer. Uh, what does this all mean for the outlook for bonds? Because uh, bonds very much correlated to South African bonds, indexed on South African bonds. Uh, we've seen South African bonds rallying this year. We've seen yields uh, just continue to drive lower in South Africa. How does this impact the fixed income space in Namibia? Yeah, I th um, we are still quite bullish on fixed income investments at this moment. Um, our inflation coming down yesterday just ties in nicely with the overall, with the global picture, I think, where you can see inflation coming down globally. Um, and this, together with monetary easing coming through maybe uh, in the next couple of months from the big economies, and just a synchronized global slowdown, these are all factors that will continue to drive bond yields um, stronger, I think, um, going forward. So bullish on bonds, uh, what does that mean for equities? Because, of course, you mentioned the, the Bernanke factor, I, I assume, with uh, Bernanke uh, hopes there for quantitative easing three. We've just seen Bernanke testifying uh, to the Banking Senate Committee and indicating that uh, they're not looking at quantitative easing right now, well, not making any mention of it. So that's being assumed to say no QE3 right now, but they are prepared to step in if necessary. So from your side, you see quantitative easing coming in from America by the end of the year, I assume. Uh, yes, we do. Um, I think our view is that um, given the negative data that has been coming out in the last couple of months from, uh, from the US, from the, Euro, from the Eurozone and from China also. Um, we just think that it increases the chance of monetary easing coming through. Um, and maybe Bernanke not at this moment ready to step in yet, but um, I think a few more, a few more negative uh, data factors coming out into the market will, um, will make them um, active in the market. And um, I think definitely from Europe's side, we could see another long-term refinancing operation coming through in the next couple of months. So, so with more money on the table, what does that mean for uh, specific sectors? If you're advising your clients right now, would you have a sector bias? Um, yes, we are generally advising to uh, rotate a bit from defensive into cyclicals. Um, we think that monetary easing coming through the next couple of months will, will benefit the cyclic cyclicals, um, especially basic materials. And then we are also overweight on the insurance counters, given they uh, they're gearing to the to the equity market specifically. Um, in within these sectors, we like uh, Anglo American the basic materials uh, space. Um, I think. It's quite attractively priced at the moment. And uh, our view is that um, China has bottomed out in, in the second quarter, or that's consensus view. And um, I think they still have, um, still have quite some room for monetary easing and stimulus um, for the economy. So we believe that demand will pick up a bit in the second half for commodities, which will obviously benefit Anglo-American. Um, in the life insurance space, we at the moment uh, prefer Old Mutual. Um, 
We think that uh, they will outperform. Um, I think Sunlam has performed really well this the first half of the year, and that price may be becoming a bit fully priced, but in general, still uh, uh, overweight on Sunlam as well. Let's just uh, move back to the fixed income space and, and just talk a little bit about the bond market because Namibia indicating its plans to raise funds in South Africa, launching a South African rand denominated bond and, and going on that roadshow in August. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Because yields are slightly lower in South Africa. Do you think this is the right move by the Namibian government to, to try and raise money in South Africa? Um, yes, I think I think it's important for them to make use of this um, of the lower yields where they are now and just um, make that um, make that money um, or issue that issue those debts, um, especially on the longer on the longer um, maturities. Um, our our debt, the country's debt, is currently very short term orientated, and they have indicated that they would like to. Um, um, extend that maturity a little bit and I think um, I think this is the way to do it. Thank you so much for joining us today. That was our Namibian market update.